Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We are gathered today in fellowship on the 23rd of our Creator's calendar, the seventh month. I think I might have that messed up. I'm sorry. But it lines up with the 7th of October for 2023 on the Gregorian calendar. And we've been having a very interesting conversation outside of the recording that we probably won't cover a repeat here for time constraints. But right here, just to share with everyone, this is a little something that was put together for anyone to share with professed believers to try to help them see that maybe it might be a good idea to consider taking his word or the instructions a little more seriously. So, Ab willing, this is edifying for everyone. It says, uh, this is all the elements of the good news, simply put, right? Everything that is required on our part. Shaul, a servant of Yahushua Mashiach, a called emissary, separated to the good news of Elohim, which he promised before through his foretellers in the set-apart scriptures, concerning his son, who came of the seed of Dawid according to the flesh, who was designated son of Elohim with power, according to the set-apart Ruach, by the resurrection from the dead, Yahushua Mashiach, our Yahuwah through whom we have received favor and office of the emissary for belief, obedience among all the nations on behalf of his name, among whom you also are the called ones of Yahushua Mashiach. Romans 1, 1 through 6. And right here, again, you're going to see the elements of the good news. Everything that is in this is repeated here. And this is the gist of what we are known or what we have to believe, okay? Yeah, brothers, I make known to you the basora or good news, which I brought as good news to you, which you also did receive and in which you stand, through which also you are being saved or delivered if you hold fast that word I brought as good news to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For I delivered to you at the first that which I also received, that Mashiach died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised the third day according to the scriptures, and that he was seen by Kepha and then by the twelve. So right here, that our Mashiach died for our sins according to the word, that he was buried, that he was raised the third day. This is the, the good news of our deliverance from death and sin, right? That we stand on being delivered through his name is all right here. And we're going to see that again. So real quick, it says, He who believes in the Son possesses everlasting life. But he who does not obey the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of Elohim remains on him. Yahuchanan 3.36. This is Yahuchanan, the immerser, who is speaking, the forerunner of Yahuwah, preparing the way for his feet. And this is what our Mashiach said himself, the one that we are to obey. Okay? You are the light of the world. It is impossible for a city to be hidden on a mountain. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it shines to all those in the house. Let your light so shine before men so that they see your good works and praise your Father who is in the Shemaim. Do not think I, that I came to destroy the Torah or the foretellers, what they just called the scriptures, okay? That is also to include the Psalms and all things written about him. He also witnesses in another place that we are to live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of Yahuwah. Okay. But he says, I did not come to destroy, but to complete or fulfill, to play or I'm not saying that right, but to fully preach or to fully fill up is what it is. For all main I say to you, Tell the Shemaim heavens and the earth pass away, 
One yod and one tittle shall by no means pass from the Torah till all be done. Whoever then breaks one of the least of these commands and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of the Shamayim. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of the Shamayim. For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall by no means enter into the kingdom of the Shamayim. Matthew, Yahu, or Matthew 5, 14 through 20. Now, the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees and how it is to be exceeded is what we need to know, which is right here. Then Yahushua spoke to the crowds and to his taught ones, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on the seat of Moshe. Therefore, whatever they say to you to guard, guard and do. But do not do according to their works, for they say, and do not do. There's another translation they say that it mentions, therefore, whatever he says, meaning Moshe, the seat that they sit on, whatever he says for you to guard, guard and do, but do not do according to their works, for they say and do not do. For they bind heavy burdens hard to bear and lay them on men's shoulders but with their finger they do not desire to move them. And they do all their works to be seen by men, and they make their tefillin wide, their shawls, their prayer shawl, right? And lengthen the zit zit of their garments, and they love the best place at feasts and the best seats in the congregations, and the greetings in the marketplaces, and to be called by men, great, great. Rabbi, Rabbi means to be exceeding or to be many, many, or greatness, greatness, right? It's where we get like a rabbit to be greatly multiplied. It says, yet you do not be called Rabbi or great one. For one is your teacher, the Mashiach, and you are all brothers. Which was a famous saying of Abraham Lincoln. He would say, we are all brothers and children of Elohim, right? And do not call anyone on earth your father, for one is your father, he who is in the Shamayim. Neither be called leaders, for one is your leader, the Mashiach. But the greatest among you shall be your servant, and whoever exalts himself shall be humbled, and whoever humbles himself shall be exalted. I don't want to go into too much detail, but think about all the examples we have of this in Scripture, okay? The exalted kingdom, the, the kingdom of Yahuda was brought down and humiliated, and the humbled one from the isles was exalted, right? The, uh, the kingdom, the monarchy was taken from the line of Pharez, to which they were humbled, and then through their humility, Miriam was exalted with the birth of our Mashiach. There's tons of examples like this. Gideon being of the smallest tribe of Manasseh and impoverished and humbled, exalted to being a leader. Same thing with Yephthah, the illegitimate son of uh, Machir of Manasseh, who was ostracized by his brethren, but later came back as leader. So he was humbled and then exalted. You have examples all throughout his word for these things of both the one and the other. It says, yet woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you shut up the kingdom of the Shamayim before men, for you do not go in, nor do you allow those entering to go in, because they hide knowledge from them, the key of knowledge, right? Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you eat up widows' houses and for a show make long prayers. Because of this, you shall receive greater judgment. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you will go about the land and the sea to win one convert, and when he is one, you make him a son of Gehenna twofold more than yourselves. Woe to you, blind guides, who say whoever swears by the dwelling place, it does not matter. 
But whoever swears by the gold of the dwelling place is bound by oath. Fools and blind, for which is greater, the gold or the dwelling place that sets the gold apart? And whoever swears by the slaughter place or altar, it does not matter. But whoever swears by the gift that is on it is bound by oath. Fools and blind, for which is greater, the gift or the altar, the, set up, the slaughter place that sets the gift apart? He then, and this is why he calls them fools and blind, because they're they're making non-issues out of things, and he's pointing out the fact, if the gift is made set apart by the altar it's offered on, how can this be possible? It's not. He then who swears by this sw the slaughter place swears by it and by all that is upon it. And he who swears by the dwelling place swears by it and by him who is dwelling in it. And he who swears by the Shamayim swears by the throne of Elohim and by him who is sitting upon it. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you tithe the mint and the ants and, you, and the cumin and have neglected the weightier of the Torah, the judgment and the compassion and the belief. These need to have been done without neglecting the others. Blind guides straining out a gnat and swallowing a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but this is also a thing. Camel, like the word gimel, where it comes from. Gimel is camel in Hebrew, and gimel is where camel came from. They're named that for the vengeance they take. That's the one of the three types of reward that is in Hebrew, if you remember. Akob, like Yaakob, means to have what you're doing return at the hill of what you're doing. Immediate recompense for the non-malicious sinner or the simple good man. Okay. Then you also have the gemel or the camel which yigamal, yigamal is, the yod in front of it is to wean a child. And a camel is what goes off, excuse me, it goes off with the goods that you put on it, and it comes back with the booty of the reward for those goods. And that is like the weaning of a child, where as Adam did to the Almighty with his firstborn as himself, so it was done with his child to him in after he was weaned if you will and where he rose up and killed the firstborn of his father his firstborn rose up and killed his son right and the same thing you can see with aharon where he led the two houses into idolatry and his two sons were consumed by strange fire so there's a picture here they swallow the gnat, or they're straining out the gnats while swallowing a camel, and that camel is bringing vengeance on them because they are not having compassion or true judgment and belief. Kepha and Clement in the recognitions make it very clear that if belief is certain, then fear is certain, and if fear is certain, then you will not do the things that will lead you to the future judgment, right? This is woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are filled with plunder and unrighteousness. Blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and dish so that the outside of them becomes clean too. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you are like whitewashed tombs which outwardly indeed look well but inside are filled with dead men's bones and all uncleanness. So you too outwardly indeed appear righteous to men, but inside you are filled with hypocrisy and lawlessness. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the fore foretellers and decorate the monuments of the righteous and say, if we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have taken part with them in the blood of the foretellers. 
Thus you bear witness against yourselves that you are sons of those who did murder the foretellers, and you fill up the measure of your fathers. Serpents, brood of adders, how would you escape the judgment of Gehenna? Gehenna was the fire pit, the junkyard, or the, the dump, if you will, that they had outside of the city. It was constantly burning, and uh, it was amassed with refuse, filth, and, and burning stench all the time. And that was the idea of what he alluded to as the Gehenna, or the future judgment, right? He says, because of this, because there are a broad of adders and serpents and doing these evil things, okay? Because of this, see, I send you foretellers and wise men and scholars of scripture. Some of them you shall kill and impale, and some of them you shall flog in your congregations and persecute from city to city, so that on you should come all the righteous blood shed on the earth, from the blood of the righteous Havel, or Abel, to the blood of Zechariahu, the son of Barakiahu, whom you murdered between the dwelling place and the slaughter place, or between the temple and the altar. And this is Yahukanan's dad, Zechariahu. Okay? They ended up killing him. Amen, I say to you, all this shall come upon this generation. Yarushalayim, Yarushalayim killing the foretellers and stoning those that are sent to her. How often I desired to gather your children together the way a hen gathers her chickens under her wings, but you would not. See, your house is left to you laid waste, for I say to you, you shall by no means see me again until you say, or see me until you say, Baruch is he who is coming in the name of Yahuwah, which is exactly what is required before the Yahudim will be able to comprehend and accept the truth of our Mashiach. And really, that's for anyone. We have to come to that truth. Now, there's one more section I added. I had to refresh it real quick. And that's right here. That was what his forerunner and our Mashiach himself said, the one whom we have to obey and listen to, that the Torah is going to re retain its significance without any deviation of even a minute bit until all is accomplished. He said the, the firmament, the Shamayim, and the earth will pass away. Fire will consume them before his words are going to be not of effect. So the idea that we should turn to them and, and obey him is important. The last thing to make that a fact is what was actually instituted by his taught ones after he came and gave them these things. Right here in the book of Acts, it says, Therefore, this is in regard to the instructions amongst all those of the nations that were coming to belief, whether they were wayward, paganized Hebrews of the lost 12 tribes that were in dispersion at the time because not even all of Yahuda was in the land, Right. Or if it was from those of the nations that were alive then or today, it doesn't change. This is what he desires for us to do. It says, therefore, I judge that we should not trouble those from among the nations or Gentiles who are turning to Elohim, but that we write to them to abstain from the defilements of idols and from whoring and from what is strangled and from blood. For from ancient, this is why, not to bother them, but to have them abstain from those four things, because for from ancient generations, Moshe has in every city those proclaiming him, being read in the congregations every Sabbath. So this was the minimum requirement, these four things. Stay away from the idols, fornication or whoring, what is strangled and blood, doing those things and then coming on the Shabbat to hear Moshe was what they needed to do so that they can conform themselves, renew their mind, and walk 
in the light of Yahuwah. That was the whole point. So Ab willing, that was pretty simple. There's a plethora of other verses, a multitude of different references that will go along exactly with what's right here. But I felt this was a very simple, concise way of getting that point across very clearly. When it says you have to exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, he tells us exactly what it was they were doing wrong and what they did right and what we need to overcome in our own walk. So thank you all for your time. And you have a wonderful rest of your Shabbat and Shavuot Tov.